Welcome back to the channel. I'm sorry if it's windy. Hopefully you can still hear me though. This is the video we've all been waiting for. The video where I actually start sawmilling. So in this video I'm going to be sawing up some beautiful ash logs. Before we start sawing up the wood I'm going to give you a tour of the sawmill, show you how to use it and tell you all the features it has. So let's get straight into it. So on each log lifter, each one comes with their own scale, which is in inches, and the log lifters rise and fall independently. So you can actually cut diagonally if you wanted to make some signs. I'll show you a clip now from Logosol's video. So to lower the log lifter, you push this down, and then you can just turn it. And to raise it back up again, you just turn it the other way, like that. Now the log lifter is made from solid aluminium and I think the grooves in the track are steel which is a stronger material. This sawmill may not look like it can lift a lot of weight but trust me it is very strong and if you can fit the log on it will lift it up. So as long as your log fits on this area basically the sawmill will be able to lift it. If you look at Logosol's promotional videos they are cutting huge trees on that so if you're interested in cutting large trees or just seeing what this machine can take then I'll put some links in the description to their videos so you can check them out as well. So the log lifters come with this cam locking system so when you put the log on you'll just butt this as close as you can to the log and then tighten it like that. Now the chainsaw I'm using is the steel MS661 which is a very powerful chainsaw. So the good thing about the sawmill is you can actually use your own chainsaw, you don't need to buy a new one. As long as your chainsaw has this style of locking system for the guard with the two hex nuts instead of the, the tallest locking system then it should work with the sawmill. Now Logosol supply you with these two specialist hex nuts with another thread on the end so that you can turn it upside down and mount it through these holes on at the sliding carriage. Now with this chainsaw I have put a ripping chain on, I'm pretty sure that is a must. Now I've already sawed up the ash and I can tell you the surface from the ripping chain is very smooth. My experience before using the sawmill I thought a chainsaw cut is the roughest thing you can get and that is true. Normally with a cross cut chain when you cut a tree down it's very rough and you can see the lines and everything but because this is a perfectly flat jig and you're using a ripping chain and the log is securely mounted to the log lifters it basically cuts perfectly straight and it's ready for sealing and anything like that. So if you're worried about the slabs not having a smooth surface you don't need to worry about that the surface is very clean. Now the logs I had were just too small to fit on their own between the two log lifters so what I've done is I made this base which is basically two sheets of MDF supported with some 2x4 screwed to it so all I did was place it on the log lifters like this. Then I used the clamps to actually clamp the MDF to the jig like that. And then I screwed the log onto the MDF. So technically this sawmill is a very large jig and with jigs you can make other jigs to go with it. So technically if you wanted to cut some wood cookies you can make a frame which connects onto this log lifter, goes down, has a flat on the bottom and then goes back up and connects onto this log lifter so then you could mount a tree vertically and then cut cookies. There are so many possibilities for cutting different shapes you want. So I think I've said enough so let's get straight into the saw milling.
Okay, so the finish coming off the chainsaw is very nice. I can see there's a bit of bark in the middle of the tree, which is quite strange. So maybe I can do something with that. Now I'm deciding whether I should get three more planks out of this log or cut it in half and get two big ones. I'm not sure how far this bark goes down and I'm not sure if this crack goes into the middle. So my best bet is probably cutting it in half because the wood might warp a bit and then I got to plane it to make it flat again. So I think I'm going to cut it in half and then get two big boards. Then I can make some table legs out of them or something. So I'm going to do that now. Nice big chunk, that would be perfect for a few table legs. Right, so there we go. I had a lot of fun using this sawmill and I can't wait to use it even more in the future. I think it's amazing to say that you did everything in the whole process from cutting down the tree to milling it up to let it dry to making a piece of furniture out of it and then finishing it. I think that's great and I can't wait to actually turn that wood into something. Now the next video in this series will be in about five weeks time because I'm actually going to uni tomorrow. Don't worry, I will be uploading videos in between. I've got a great toolbox video coming, a table build and other things. It's just I won't be able to use a sawmill because obviously I'm not at home. So I'm gonna have to do it in my half term. So hopefully you can wait. I can't wait to get straight back on it. I got some giant wood cookies in the workshop to mill up. I wanna make some nice side tables out of that. If you like the look of this sawmill, I'm gonna put links in the description below to where you could buy it, to the promotional videos on it, to Logosol's website and their social media. So please check them out. It's a great product and I had a lot of fun using it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you did. If you've got any questions or you just wanna chat, comment down below. If you haven't already and you managed to stick this long in the video, make sure you subscribe. Obviously you're enjoying it. And yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.